Good afternoon and a very welcome to another Thursday Live with me, Mama Choco Nadine Fosler um, and Choco Baines. I am dressed in yellow, a sunny, bright, summery day in the Eastern Cape, a jam-packed day with meetings, but I'm right and ready to give some inspiration on how to paint furniture items. So for the month of October, we have a choco challenge and I'm challenging you to select that furniture item in your house that needs a new leash on life, something that needs colour, something that needs upcycling. Um, so I'm going to share tips and tricks with you today and then you take this creativity and make it your own. It's going to be a few easy steps. And we are also here to assist and guide during the session. So if you have questions, this is a free platform where you can ask them. Kaylee is taking the pictures or the video and she will prompt me the moment that there's a question and I'll do my best to answer it as best as possible. So first of all, the item, you have seen the picture and I'll show you the furniture item later that we are going to work on is an item that was previously varnished. So furniture pieces most often have a varnish coating on them because varnish preserves the oil in the wood so that your furniture item is treated, it's preserved, and we don't want to remove that preservation. We rather want to keep the, the varnish there and just paint on top, not to harm the wood, so for all the men out there, if your wife is starting to choco, you just leave her alone. Because she is busy with the creative process, she will get out of your head, she will start being creative and also add excitement to your home and the space that she works in. So with choco, we don't recommend to sand down the surface, especially if it's varnished. Important now the tip is to make sure that the varnish is older than six months because varnish takes time to cure even before you can paint anything else on top of it. So allow a six month curing time or if it's all the varnish, you clean properly with lacquer thinners and a cloth. So you want to wipe and wash the surface skin. What the lacquer thinners does, it etches the surface, removes oil, removes oils, as chocolate is a water-based product, it just edges the surface so that the paint can do its gripping work and all the oils and residues that's on there. Choco has a built-in primer, built-in sealer, so it just makes the entire process easy. Wear gloves, work in a well-ventilated space when you do the cleaning work and then from there you allow the fun to start. Now I'm just going to tackle this quickly before we start with the paint work is when a varnish coat, the varnish seal is compromised or if you remove the varnish coating from an item. Now compromised, um, the, comp the varnish coatings that are compromised are compromised due to time if the varnish is very old and sometimes you cannot even notice the fact that it's compromised but there are fine cracks in the varnish that we can't notice but that that allows for the oil to move through the varnish coating and that's when bleed problems occur. Also, when we remove the varnish coating, we actually remove the coat that preserves the oil in the wood and that's when bleed happens. So bleeding is when you paint and you see that your paint all of a sudden changes color. Now with chalkboard, there are always ways of fixing things and the way we fix bleed problems is with our clear glaze. So if you have cleaned your surface well with a lack of thinness, um, don't scratch, don't sand your varnish, even with steel wool. Because the moment you start scraping, cleaning with steel wool and lack of thinness, you can actually compromise that varnish coat. Okay, so just a cloth and proper cleaning. We paint furniture on a daily basis for clients. It's part of our business um, and we've never had any issues. So make sure that's the very first important step 
that your surface has been cleaned properly, even more than once. We all love furniture polishes, um, so that needs to be removed from your surface before you can start painting. If your surface was oil treated, like with a linseed oil treatment, like with a fresh varnish, varnish coat, you need to allow a six month curing time before you can start painting it. Now, if a bleed problem occurs, you have cleaned your surface properly with a lacquer thinners, you have painted it, and now you see, oh, my hat, the color is discoloring. What we recommend to use is the clear glaze. So first apply your first coat of paint because you never know when bleeding will happen, okay? And if that happens after your first coat of paint, you allow that coat of paint to dry for four hours, paint onto the problem areas, your undiluted clear glaze, three coats, half an hour apart, and then wait 24 hours before, so 24 hours before you then paint onto your glaze. And the glaze then will act as a barrier to prevent furniture bleed. Okay, now I have cleaned my surface properly. I am going for the demonstration, paint onto this MD, this is not MD, this is masonite. So I'm going to paint on the masonite, but on a varnish surface, after you've cleaned, the painting steps will be exactly the same. So I'm going to decant matte black in a paint tray. And what you need when painting furniture is you need paint brushes of different sizes. So some of the crevices and grooves of your surface will be so small that a roller can't reach everywhere. This is a Hamilton's Enzyme brush. Perfect quality for a beautiful even finish where the roller can't reach. And just, I'm just going to grab artist brush here. It's my kitchen, but it's full of brushes. Here is an artist brush, but on the feel and texture of the bristle, I know immediately if it's a good quality paint brush. So the finer, the smoother the bristles, the better the quality, okay? So this will really be for those details when not, not a paintbrush or a roller can reach all the fine detail. And then my roller of choice is a mohair roller. So you can see it has very short hair, white hair, beautiful quality. Um, so a foam roller can add bubbles to your air, to your surface. It is something that you definitely can work with, but it needs some practice. Whereas a mohair roller, if you are new to painting furniture, this actually is the best tool to use as it is um, foolproof. Now, on the areas, say for instance, you had crevices and groove smaller area, you first do your cut lines. Either with a smaller paintbrush, depending on, on where you need to fill in, or a larger paintbrush. So say for instance, this was the edge where my roller cannot reach. You first do your cut lines, right? So that's the first step, cut lines. Evenly, don't put thick paint. You want an even application, smooth application for your cut lines. Can you see it's even the distribution of the paint? Let's put some here so that it makes sense. So I do my cut lines first and my cut line will be the entire board. But that just needs to make sense. Now I take my mohair roller and you roll the paint on. And I promise you, you can press hard, you can change direction. This is such a lovely, and it even it distributes the paint and quickly it covers a big area. And the lovely thing is that the mohair rollers are also available in different sizes. So they are the same thickness, that's important to work with a bigger core, but they are available in 50 millimeters, 100 millimeters, and this is a 225 millimeter. So I just want to add more paint. 
so I can't paint as I need it. Another tip, cover your paint jar with a lid so that no air contamination can happen. Now I'm not doing it now because I don't know where the lid is. And this is a quick session. It's not as if I'm painting an entire furniture piece all at once. Now I've dipped my roller in the paint again. Change direction as you need to. And you roll. Okay, but you still make sure you do it evenly. Okay, it still needs to be perfect attention to detail. Change direction and I evenly. This is my first coat and you can see the coverage is beautiful. going to leave this now. First coat is complete. I'm going to leave this to dry. Just going to put it down. This one can, can go down. And here I have a board that has received the first coat and my first coat is dry. What I do now is I apply my second coat exactly as I have done in the initial stages. I first do my cut lines, same process. Now how long does the paint to dry? Weather always play a part in the drying time. Colder days, humid days, cloudy days, everything takes longer and you, you apply your second. over the cut lines as well because while the cut lines are still wet you can make sure that the paint evenly gets distributed and everything is nicely even so realistically on a furniture piece you will turn the roller to roll like this and as close as possible to your cut line and evenly roll out and allow to drop. Now I will do the same where I want different colors. With the same process you will see on the drawer we for instance used ish miles ish you will see later. So the same principles was applied here. There's just an imperfection on the wood but I'll show you how to hide imperfections shortly. Now just to end this first tutorial is I have now applied my two coats of paint and it has dried. Now what I do next is you don't have to do this. This is a personal decision. If you, so Choco has a building primer, building sealer. If we paint something in our kitchens, bathrooms, outdoors, or if you have small, small children and you want to add extra stain resistance, water resistance, or UV resistance to a furniture piece, you can add the clear glaze. And it also give, gives a subtle satin finish. Now on darker surfaces, we recommend to mix one part clear glaze with one part cool boiled water. So what I'm going to do, here's my clear glaze. I'm using the lid of the jar, one part clear glaze, one part cool boiled water. Now, those of you that already know all this, I'm sorry if I bore you, but we always have new viewers. Um, so just to make sure that everyone knows exactly. So there's one part cool boiled water, and the reason for the cooled boiled water is that tap water contaminates paint and paint products and if you have any left over you can store in an airtight container and use again later. Now I'm going for the application of the clear glass to make my surface water, UV and more stain resistant. I'm going to make use 
of a microfiber cloth. Okay, and you can see that it's no dark or harsh colors on here, like red or very blue. It's light in color. I dip it in my cool boiled water, squeeze out excess moisture, so the dampness of the cloth actually allows for the glaze to evenly be distributed. So squeeze out all excess moisture. You just want damp, you don't want wet. You can, you can wear gloves or just immediately wash your hands after use. I dip this in my glaze mix. Make sure it absorbs the mixture nice and well everywhere. Squeeze out excess moisture. Make sure the glaze sits everywhere. And now I fold the cloth like a ball in the palm of my hand. And in circular motion, I can make it more dry. I apply the glaze onto my surface. I work in a well lit space so that I can see exactly where I wipe on. And when this is dry, more or less 13 minutes later, and you see any streakiness or lines, you simply repeat this step. All the imperfections will be hidden. The reason why you see imperfections is just because of the sheen level and maybe you didn't evenly apply it. So this now will dry. Just gonna evenly wipe here. It's everywhere I can see and I'm going to allow for this to dry and then add another coat. I'm going to wash my hands while my glaze is still wet. It's not always that Maestro behaves himself so well. And just because he received a hiding from Kaylee earlier, before the session started, because he ran away with my shoes. I'm shoeless. So I thought after the day in the office or shop, um, I'll quickly take off my shoes just for a moment. And Maestro decided this is a huge game. He's going to run away with them. So I still need to go look for my shoes. Okay, now for one of the drawers. You can see I have an imperfection here and I want to show you this on purpose. So if you have imperfections on furniture pieces, you can use our stencil of Paris. But a lovely other medium that can also be used is our decoupage paper range. Okay, and this is what I'm going to use on my furniture piece. Last night when I put back the drawer, I realized I've applied mine upside down. So just something to take into consideration, consideration is just to see how you apply it, especially something with script on. But Lee said when I told her that maybe this is a thing. So maybe putting, putting scripted items upside down can be a new, um, a new deco trend. I'm going to apply this on my already painted surface and here I've also allowed more or less a four hour drying time. I'm painting glaze on my surface, undiluted glaze this time. So now the clear glaze is not diluted. You can also dilute it, I prefer not to because the glaze is the glue and you do want to ensure that your glue is in concentrated form, that it sticks quickly and easily. If the instructions on the decoupage paper instruction manual says differently, you can also follow that as everything has been tested, okay? This is just me working against a watch and need to make sure that things happen quickly. So as you can see, it's a generous application of glaze everywhere. And while then this is still wet, also work perfectly, attention to detail, do it properly. Like everything else we do, we do things properly, proper. I now apply my decoupage paper on my surface. 
Now this does not to be cut to size or you can cut it to size, whatever you prefer. If it's something that can be cut to size, this is an off cut that I'm using, okay, just for the demonstration purposes, but I'm also going to show you how to get rid of excess. So I've put, applied the decoupage paper on the wet lace. I'm using my hands to just rub out all the air bubbles, make sure it sits nicely, perfectly on the surface. And now, very gently, without overworking the paintbrush on top of the paper, I'm just... Everybody, Kaylee. So, the first person is from Durban. Hello, Durban. Then we have Namibia. Hello, Namibia. Then we have Crystal in Kruger's Door. Crystal, welcome, Crystal. We, had, we have Port Edward in KZN. Yeah, hello, We have Kaylee. another supporter from KZN. Yeah. We have Jeffries Bay. Hello, Jeffries Bay. Yeah. And we have Monte Vista, Cape Town. Uh -huh. It's lovely to see you all. And people are asking for them to, if you can maybe show them your dress. You want to, I will do a dance for you in my dress shortly. I love dresses and I love hats. Um, okay, and we have America. Ah, that's very interesting. Okay, so from wherever you are watching from, um, may you be inspired to be creative. Okay, this is the reason for me doing this. Okay, now my paper, and if you don't have access, for instance in America, to the chalk or paper range, you can use something like fabric, you can use um, tissue paper, you can use serviettes. So you can be creative with so many things, and I do hope that chalk goes to America soon. Everybody's commenting their areas now. Is it? So read the race to you as well, Nadine. Yeah, please, let's first have a recap of where the people are watching from. We have Limpopo. Mm -hmm. We have Herodapurt, Boxburg, yeah. Cape Town again. Yeah. We have West Coast Joinery Suppliers. Namibia, welcome, Balfastar. Friede Kloofkoop. Yeah. Van der Bijl Park, Witbank, Mpumalanga. Yeah. Komatipoort. Yeah. Porte, um, Porterville, Weskop. Porterville. Porterville. Ja. Ja. En Johannesburg, Uitenhoog. Ja. En dat is wat ons het so vraag. So dit is Uitenhoog. 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 Um, it's lovely to be with you all. Okay, so. And Mossel Bay. And Mossel Bay. Oh, <laughs> it's lovely to know where you are, where you are Pretoria. watching from. Please continue to share. We always go through all the comments. Um, yeah, it's lovely to, to be here in... I'm not sure if I'm in your sitting room, in your tea, in your tea room, in your in your dining room. Um, enjoy. Okay, so welcome in my kitchen. I'm going to now use a hundred grit piece of sandpaper, and very important. Okay, so the decoupage paper was just applied with a clear glaze, right? And this now needs to dry. Make sure you put it in an area where there's no breeze. Because the moment there's wind, it will actually lift the paper and have an influence on the curing and drying and setting and sticking of the paper. So it needs to dry flat in an area where there are no breezes or wind. Okay, now I use a hundred grit piece of sandpaper. And the easiest way is to cut it more or less, I would say 10 by 10 centimeters. This is might, might be a bit bigger, bigger. Roll it up like a sausage and you simply sand okay so i move so the paper has dried properly this is very important it needs to be dry 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 how long this takes to dry depends first of all on the temperature but leave it a few hours the longer the better because what happens if you sand it just removes it so evenly so i'm just going to speed this up sorry for the noise Nadine, do you perhaps know what this decoupage paper's name is? Yeah, it's the early newspaper. This is late afternoon, but this newspaper is called the early newspaper. 
I'm scared of the choco ranch. Like I said, there you can see the, don't, don't look at that because I didn't paint the edge. But you can see, if you look there, Kaylee, zoom in, how evenly the sandpaper actually sands it off. So don't look at that section because that is just the wood that's cut roughly. Can you see how evenly it's being removed with the sandpaper? If you don't have a, if you don't have sandpaper, you can also use a nail file. Okay, that is for me the easiest way to remove the decoupage paper. Underneath, I painted. I'm not sure if I mentioned the color with Ishmael's Ish. And that is actually beautiful and a beautiful complementary color to this paper range. And that's it. So to tell you, yesterday, I noticed that today is Thursday and I need to be in your TV room, sitting room, dining room, wherever you're watching from, to be ready with a new Thursday life. And I previously painted this furniture item. You will recognize it when I show it to you now. And I think I had to think of an idea to show you for the Thursday life, but had no time to rush to the shops, get something. But I noticed I have a furniture piece in my own home. Colors change, moods change, I want to change it. And in an instance, I kid you not, it looked differently. Kaylee helped me in the shop this week, because Monica is on leave. And last night, she's a teenager, she actually said in her words and she's behind the camera witness to how i'm going to repeat her words. she said mom i actually only know now once i've seen you how quickly you transformed a furniture piece know and realize how special choco is because with paint and especially choco the steps are just so easy to make something look completely different in a moment while i had a meeting with west coast joinery yesterday afternoon 5 30 i was prepping and painting this furniture piece but that's just us women that can do it because we can multitask um so let me go show you the furniture piece in its finished form okay and then i'll show you my dress don't look at the hair because the wind is blowing us away it's clean, but I have to wear a hat too. Okay, so the furniture piece now looks like this. We did this in the beginning of the year where the, um, we actually had the brown paper there. And I showed steps in the seats upside down, so don't judge. Um, but there you can see it in its final form. And by just changing hardware, colors, and something as simple, and you could actually also use normal newspaper to create this if you didn't have um, the decoupage paper. And a few drops of paint. I have used less than a 250ml jar of paint. I still have half of the jar left to change the cupboard, and I also painted the sides. Okay, so this is it, and this is how easy it is. So my message for the week ahead. I had such a laugh because Yaku had to travel today and he hit a pothole. And he said when he hit the pothole in the Eastern Cape, the potholes are so permanent they now have names. So the pothole that he hit, um, the name is Chameleon. So look out for the Chameleon pothole if you ever travel um, through the Eastern Cape. And he just made me notice. And this is now my message for you. Um, is to make your mark, okay? Be individual, be, be an original, be you, be unique. Don't allow to be put in a box, we need original. We need different, that's why we all are different. So stay true to you, be a, an original, be unique, and make a big, huge, colorful mark, like the bottles, in the Eastern Cape, okay? Make your mark and stay true to you. And look out for chameleon. Lots of love. I'm not going to be in a live session next week as I'm traveling up in Africa, but we have something very special to share with you next week. So make sure you don't miss out. And let's all celebrate being human this human but also women 
this month um, and be aware of, of Breast Cancer Month that we are in support of and also thinking of those that are facing challenges but also opportunities. Lots of love to you all and for those that I have met today that so experience hardships this, this past week and month and um, you know who you are, just know I'm carrying you in my heart. Okay, lots of love, till next time. Bye-bye.